Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to introduce you to the brand new ordering methods added in .NET 7 and explain why even though they're slightly better than what they aim to replace, they're not really the thing you should be using for ordering for most cases. There's actually something way way better, both faster and memory efficient and we're gonna see it in this video. If you like the above content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple project over here, which is running .NET 7, and I have currently installed the latest RC1 on my PC. So that's what we're working with. And this is just a simple console application. And what I wanna have is some items collection. But just to make this more easy to understand for this example, I'm going to make a collection here from one to let's say 100 items but I'm going to randomize the items in that collection. So I'm going to say, give me some random data with a seed, and then I'm going to say dot select, and I'm going to select um, random dot next. And this will give me, in this case, let's say, do we want to enumerate, let's say two array, just so I can actually visualize this a better. It doesn't have to be an array for this to work. It works on any enumerable. So if I have an array of integers or a list of integers or a collection of integers, if I wanted to order this with link, I would have done something like this. I would say item dot, in fact, this should be items dot order by, and then I would order by itself. And if I say to array, I don't have to do it twice. I could just skip it and only do it once. And this will only allocate the array once. But if I do that, um, let me show you what happens. I'm gonna add this so it doesn't exit. And I'm going to quickly uh, debug this. I'm going to go ahead and press debug to run it. And then as you can see, it's going to create those items over here, all random unordered. And if I do this and order it by itself, then I'm getting everything ordered in a ascending fashion, which is the default. And if I wanted this to be um, ordered descending, then I could say order by descending. But now because I'm enumerating this multiple times, I have to say, or it should be better to say to array over here. And if I do that, then I can get the things order once and order twice. This one is ascending. So from the smallest to the biggest, and this one descending from the biggest to the smallest. Now, what .NET 7 does is it actually adds a method that removes the need for you to have this lambda over here, which will be allocated and have memory implications. So we can now remove that and say simply order or order descending. And now you don't have to have this lambda there targeting to itself. So if I go here and run this, then as you can see, the numbers will be the same because we're using um, a randomization seed. So the data is the same. We're going ascending over here and we're going descending over here and everything works. Now, I've seen it in many places where people are presenting this as the way to order collections, lists, arrays, and it is not the case. What I'm going to do is first show you how this compares to the order by versions of ordering that we had in .NET 6 and actually in any version before that since link was basically introduced just to show you how the delta between the two things are. So I'm going to say add benchmark.net in here to run some benchmarks and I'm going to add a benchmarks class over here. I would like to have a memory diagnoser so I can actually see what's happening with my memory. And then I'm going to have uh, the randomization element again, so I can actually run the tests in a deterministic way, just so there is no uh, difference between run to run. I can do that by simply adding a random field in my class. And then for these tests, I'm going to use an array first. We're going to see a list later, but for now, we're going to start with an array. So we have a, an array over here of integers, and I'm using the same technique to create a randomized array with shuffled elements, basically. And our tests look like this. We have the order by and the order, then the order by descending and the order descending. And in both cases, we're enumerating to an array just so we can actually evaluate the results of those things. Because if I was to return I enumerable, because that's lazy loaded, it wouldn't actually return anything making sure that this is in release mode and then go here and comment all that out and say benchmark runner dot run benchmarks, not bit vector benchmarks, fat fingers. Here we go. And that should now be enough. 
to run what you see in here. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get back in terms of performance between order by an order and order by descending and order descending. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So order by an order, just a small minor nanosecond level difference in speed. However, less memory allocated because we don't have that delegate anymore. And the results are the same for descending. There doesn't seem to be a noticeable difference. This is all within margin of error between the two things. So yes, it is just slightly faster, but nothing that would you'd ever see really. Um, and same goes with the memory. Yes, you're saving some memory but it isn't anything major. I think this was just added mostly for cosmetic reasons. And if you actually see behind the scenes, it is using a static identity uh, function here, which is what we'll ultimately call the same order by method anyway. So it all goes all the way back to order by and order by descending just in a more efficient way that is only allocated once. Now, why I think you shouldn't really be using those methods in the first place? Well, because in this use case, you really have two things, right? You have an array and you have a list you want to order. Well, both of these methods have very efficient sorting methods. So I'm going to remove the descending from the equation just because it will just make the tests run slower. The order by ascending will be enough. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these tests now and I'm going to merge the allocation of the items inside the test itself because in order to showcase the next method, I kind of have to because there is a way to set up the data per test execution, but it is a bit tricky. So I'm just going to merge that so everyone is on the even playing field. And I'm going to show you how you can very, very easily write a sort method that does the exact same thing significantly faster. So we still have the items to array. And what I want to do is say array dot sort and then pass down the items. And then we can just return the items. I don't need to do the two array. Now, I don't really need to enumerate the two array twice. I can operate on the enumerable directly. So this will make order by an order just a bit faster, but we are comparing the fastest ways to do this thing. So I think that's a fair compromise. And just by using the sort method over here, we actually are going to be way, way faster. How much faster? Well, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and run this benchmark and let's wait and see what we get back. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see over here, order by an order in terms of speed, pretty similar, basically the same thing. Order is more memory efficient just because of the absence of that delegate. However, the sort method doing the exact same thing, 2.4 microseconds and basically one fourth of the memory of order by and one third of the memory of order. Now you have to keep in mind that array.sort will actually mutate the array. It won't return a new array. It is a void that actually mutates the array. So that might not always be the thing you want to do with your collection because in all of these scenarios, order and order by are pure methods. They're actually tagged as pure, I'm, I'm sure, if I go uh, over here and hover, they must be. Okay, order by is tagged as pure. Uh, pure means it doesn't have any side effects. So yes, it is significantly faster. It's actually more than twice as fast and three to four times more memory efficient, but you should know that it actually changes the data set. And that's why I'm setting the items every single time, because if I had it over here, it would only change them once and then you'd be operating on an already sorted uh, array. Now, what I want to do is change all that to a list just to show you how that would also work because that might be the thing you might be more familiar with and might be using because it's really it has more functionality at least an array is fixed in size it is a bit more tricky to work with i haven't seen many people use arrays that much but lists are all over the place so i'm going to change all that to lists however we can no longer use the array.sort on a list because it's not an array it's a list but what we can do is use items.sort, the method in the list. And by the way, if you wanted this to be descending, you'd have to write um, the a comparison. So that with the I comparer, in this example, we only work on ascending. That's why I'm not showing that, but it is possible. You can actually change the sorting 
in any way you want. Oh, and if you're wondering that because you have a delegate, it will actually be slower, well, you can cache the delegate and use it here, or you can use an iCompare implementation. And you don't have to worry about that. So it will be equally as fast. So now everything is list. I'm going to run the same tests with a list to see both how order by and order perform with a list and how sort list compares to the array list. Not the array list, the array compared to the list. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have for that. So as you can see, just a little bit slower than the array, just, just a few nanoseconds, but equally as memory efficient if you actually add the delta between an array and a list, which is a few bytes, I think 32 bytes in this case. Um, so equally as efficient and the changes do stay here in scale. Now, the last thing I want to show is that, well, I've been showing numbers for this test and you might be working with text. So you might be like, okay, how does this work if I have strings I want to order, which is the other most common thing you might be ordering? Well, let's take a look at that. I'm going to make a benchmarks with text over here. I'm just going to slightly change that. So what I'm going to do is just to string the numbers. So I'm still going to use the same numbers, but as strings, I'm going to keep this as a list for now, but a list of strings over here and over here and over here and that's it and i want to go back to the program.cs and change that with the benchmarks with test i'm going to go ahead and run those benchmarks and see how it differs between running for numbers and running for text which obviously will be less efficient all right so results are back and as you can see now the sort method isn't really the fastest it is from one to two microseconds slower however it is still the more memory efficient in the grand scheme of things these two kilobytes will actually save you more time in gc than this so pick your battles just know it is not everywhere that sort will always be more efficient in speed it will usually be more efficient in memory though now the last thing i want to show is that in the numbers world over here if i revert everything to an array and i should have shown this really um, earlier but if everything is an array then what you can also do is you can work with a span and sort the span so if you happen to be working with a span and not necessarily turn something into a span just to sort it then you can say span of type int in this case and span has a sort method so items dot sort and then you can return the items but of course you have to array them, which will be inefficient in memory because you allocate the array twice, but know that span does have that sort method. Now, I want to close this video by showing you what this array.sort is actually doing and why it is so efficient, and that's basically the same for the span.sort and the list.sort. They basically operate on the same logic. So we're going to go here and find this array sort helper, and I'm going to find the array implementation. And as you can see, this is using an introspective sort, which is why it is fast both in small data sets and also in large data sets and also memory efficient. It is because introspective sort is a hybrid algorithm that actually combines multiple algorithms into one. This is a very hard word to pronounce for me. So as you can see over here, we go with an intro sort over here. And then as you can see, this starts as a quick sort and then there are checks on the partition size. So if the partition size of the data we're operating on is less or equal to the intro sort size threshold, which in .NET Core and 5 and 6 and 7 is actually 16, then it checks for partition sizes and it switches to an insertion sort. Otherwise, if a specific depth limit is reached, then we go for a heap sort. And in the end, you can see recursively that it goes back to the intro sort, which is the quick sort and the heap sort and the insertion sort over and over again. And this is how it is both fast and memory efficient in both small and big data sets. Again, I think it's great that they added these simplified methods because it does remove some memory allocation. However, for that example of ordering on itself, these sort methods will be faster and more memory efficient, basically always as long as you can deal with the fact that they will mutate your collection, which you might not always want, but you should know that they are there. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me, it's really going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more, and like this, and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.